Get ready. It's going to be a very, very intense journey. Begin. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frame Skip Podcast. The king is back, and he is ready to rule his kingdom. This is the leanest and meanest gaming podcast on the web, and this is our Game of the Year episode where we are going to go over our favorite and most hated games the last year. If you like that, remember to give us a review. Follow us on the podcast catcher of your choice. As always, enjoy the show. Starting things off first, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the ladies' man, Elijah Steele. Elijah, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about and you? And the coach, Kyle Newman. <laughs> You're sexy a- AF. Thanks, coach. I appreciate that. All right. Beat the crap out of you. <laughs> the amazing Austin Eller. Hey, what's up? What's up, buddy? Oh, I'm I'm great, Seth. How are you? I'm great. And George Cam Newton Loftus. Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford. <laughs> That's are gonna get Matt Stafford. Also, I gotta say, I like how your intros were sleek, just like your jawline. Yeah. Thanks, bud. I, I've been working. You like that? I've been working on my jawline for Oh, we good. all like it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a real shame that people out there can't see it listening it's, to this. It opens right up real wide, too. I'm more about the forehead and the eyebrows, but okay. I'm all, I look great. I'm trimmed up real nice. I, I did it just because I knew you were going to be on this week, coach. So I, I felt good about grooming myself and making myself look good. All right. The awards we are giving out this week are most underrated game of 2020, the biggest disappointment of 2020, the most anticipated game of 2021 and beyond, best gaming moment of 2020, best game you played for the first time in 2020, game of the year for 2020. Go to no, oh, 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 almost, almost hit my. my. <laughs> Ghosts and goblins, I heard. Yeah, and a game of the decade because I have it written all out. So that's, oh, what, that's what happened. What a save! I did. You know, no, <laughs> I was about to say. I, it's not what you think. No one knows. All right. Um. What else was I going to say? I don't know. I have no idea. How you guys been lately? I haven't been on a long time. Welcome back. It's been about yeah, a month. Missed you. We have missed you a lot. Over a month, probably. I don't know. I don't know exactly. It was like just Elijah and I, and they were fun. But God, holy train wreck, Batman! <laughs> we need we need a captain back to steer the ship. <clears throat> there is one thing I can guarantee everyone listening to the show, and that is that um, it's this is going to be better than the TGAs because every year they're consistently awful. Uh, so, oh yeah, the Enjoy. production value of this is drastically better than the Game Awards. So our much budget, better. Our budget. Way higher. Unexpectedly right. higher. And we got five new Switch uh, exclusives that we're going to premiere yeah. tonight. So, yep. Here's my problem with the Game Awards, like the official ones. Make it half the time. Make it half that time, right? Cut it in half. And you'd be golden. I don't need to sit there for four hours. It, I think it happened like during a football game, and I had family over, and everyone just thought I was being an antisocial. And it's like, yeah. I'm not. This person is just wasting my time. Yeah. Barely talking about games. It's just a trailer show at this point, and that's fine. Right. Also, just keep it so true. Time, so, tight. Keep time tight. So think of this. In the 80s and 90s, I know you guys are a little too young for this, but football was golden. Why? Because there were no expansion teams, right? So what they need to do is cut down the awards. There's so There's too many awards. That they don't even like, they just spit off. And I know Elijah had a problem with this because uh, he wanted to see um, the reactions of the developers. But there's so many that they have to be like, okay, the best so-and-so is this. And then the best so-and-so is this. So they'll do like five awards in about 10 seconds. And then do another award an hour later. That's the problem. Right. So, and I got what you were, you were, you were feeling because, um, when Phasmophobia comes- won an award, and they didn't even get to say, holy crap, our little game won something. Like, that's just the problem I had. See, my problem is that there's, like, there's too much to celebrate. And, like, I feel like we barely got to celebrate. We're going to correct that this Friday with additional frame skip awards. And I'm very excited about that. But there's just, there's so much to a video game that I don't think... 20 to 25 awards can really encapsulate all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into it. There's more to a game than just best art direction, but also, like, explain more about best art direction versus best game director versus best direction. Tell me why those are actually different awards, please, because uh, that would be neat. They're not. I'm just guessing. 
They also didn't they also have just a straight up best direction and they didn't really give a description for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's yeah. north. Yeah. North. <laughs> best oh. cardinal direction. Yeah. Southeast. <laughs> Southeast. <laughs> Southeast, man. Come on. And best cardinals were the Arizona Cardinals until this last week. It is now officially the St. Louis Cardinals are the best Cardinals. Um, you could argue that it Louisville. is North. I mean, it, North has its own star. So, like, it's the most, it's the most, it's the most famous yeah. star. It's true. And, like, in the South, they have the Southern Cross. That's, like, their North Star, like, their immovable object. But, like, that's a whole constellation. It's not a single star. So, it's, like, it's it, it's clearly the North because it has its own entire star. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad we settled that. You can find fun any fact. I got it. I have an Elijah fun fact. Okay, so I fun approve. fact: this the last like 48, 72 hours. If you had a really good pair of binoculars and you knew where Saturn was, you would be able to see the rings. That's how close our planets were aligned. So we should have gone there. On, yeah, why didn't you go, Coach? Because of. Um, you know, COVID. having to teach. <laughs> and he could go to Saturn because of COVID. He's, oh, he's, too, he's too busy. He's too busy to go. Oh, do you, God. Do you think they have better game awards on Saturn? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Shorter, at least. Better I mean, surfing. More storms. Bigger storms. So bigger waves. So Before we storm. get into anything, I just want to say that we're complaining about the game awards and you, you know that this show is about to be really freaking long. <laughs> we have, we're seven minutes in and we haven't done nothing. And we're also so, not announcing Marvel Ultimate Alliance Black Order, so it's not going to be anywhere near as exciting. <laughs> What's the difference between Saturn and my girlfriend? Saturn can get rings. Uh, oh! I got a better one, Elijah. What's the difference between Jupiter and your girlfriend? <laughs> Jupiter exists. That's right! That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say! <laughs> I don't like jokes that are that pointed. Oh, I, don't... I did that when the PS5 came out. I'm like, what's the difference between my PS5 and a girlfriend? I can actually get a PS5. Oh, I don't like self jokes that are that pointed either. <laughs> Let's bring back the positivity. We got the whole crew together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're rocking. We're I'm yeah. most disappointing. Oh, we got oh, us starting oh, five and gaming. Like, let's let's be excited about that. Let's not talk about Elijah's not girlfriend. Let's not laugh like the Joker on acid at that joke. <laughs> Uh, all right speaking of joker um uh, did you oh no, did you see, hold on hold on did Here you see go. the new trailer for the uh batman animated movie no no Ooh, look at it after it's like old school samurai but it's like you remember the bruce lee movies when well no you weren't alive in the 70s but i got, you know, I got year of the dragon the, i got year of the dragon okay poster. so yeah. on saturdays in in the 80s right early to mid 80s Saturdays was nothing but Godzilla movies and Bruce Lee. So the feel of the new trailer for the Batman animated was that Saturday afternoon um, martial arts uh, movie, which I'm real excited. And Bruce Tim is directing it and, or I'm sorry, is producing it. So it will be good. I promise you. Wait, did they already do like a Batman samurai movie? Yes. Yeah. And it was amazing. Oh. It was the anime. Yeah. It, it was, was really straight good. up and it, and it had mechs. All right. But the way that well, they did. It. Okay, let's get back to video games. We're going to have a long show this week, so we're just going to jump right into the awards, kids. Just let's jump right in. Jump right in like a fat kid at the pool. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Most underrated game of 2020. George, why don't you start us off? All right. Uh, I got Sackboy a big adventure. Uh, this game was delightful. This game was everything from, like, uh, Mario 3D World, like the Wii U game, uh, but it just had, like, weird intrinsic things that Nintendo would never do, but Sony could get away with, being, like, a little bit more avant-garde. And I really liked it, man. I thought it was super fun. The musical levels were a blast. The art direction itself was incredibly weird, and, like, it took all the parts I liked about Little Big Planet, but, like, made a game about it. Like, the game's focus wasn't about you collecting things to then build your own levels it just wanted to show you a bunch of cool stuff and i thought it did that really really well that was the game i was excited about i think a lot of people slept on it and they shouldn't i think it's super fun i think you should check out Sackboy: a big adventure i completely agree with you now is that on the ps4 as well yes, yes. it is okay also wink wink the online multiplayer is now up cool yeah elijah we gotta start cracking yes, cracking those trophies yes we do all right Next up, Austin, most underrated game. 
2020. I don't have an answer. I, I there was nothing I really can think of that I played that was smaller or lesser known this year, so I don't have an answer for this. Sorry. Was Vader <laughs> Immortal dope? Oh yeah, that was great, but it came out last year. So uh, VR, VR games exist in a weird nebulous place for me. <laughs> they, they really do. Be like yeah. Vader Immortal came out for me this year. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Um, all right, sorry. Still love you. So handsome. All right, great, great job, boss. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go next. Most underrated game for me for 2020. Um, I have Haven in here. Have you guys heard of Haven? Yes, no. I really want to play that. I started playing it this month, and I um, I really enjoyed it. Like, <clears throat> it's this game about this couple, and I, I don't want to spoil the story. Um, it, but it's a really good story, and it's sort of I don't want to say dating sim because usually dating sims include like multiple choices of relationships, but it's more of it's just focused on this one couple and you get to make choices and build your relationship on this planet that you ran away to. And it's got really good combat, uh, RPG style combat. And it's all about gathering resources and just going through day to day and progressing in the story. It's not a hard game, but it's a fun game to turn on and remember how single you are. All right. Coach. All right. <laughs> okay. okay so, game. Way back in May, which seems like forever ago, on my birthday, May 28th, a game called Bug Fables came out. And I'm about and I'm about halfway through it, or I was about halfway through it, and then it hit the fan or stuff hit the fan, sorry. So uh I, I haven't been able to finish it, but I think I feel that that is what should have been Paper Mario 3, basically. You know, because the third Paper Mario on the Wii. Um, is when they kind of started going a different direction from the true RPG format. And this still has that RPG format and it's, and it's beautiful and the way the art direction and everything, but it released on PC in 19, but consoles, it released May 28th this year. So bug fables for me. I totally forgot that game came out this year. Like I don't listen to a lot of gaming podcasts. One I really get into is called into the aether and it's just two nice dudes. Just, having really long conversations about video games and like they both work in creative fields like they just have like really thought-provoking stuff where they talk about stuff i don't necessarily think of when i think of games and i remember listening to them just gush about that game they had like i think their own special podcast where they talked about it but i can't believe that that was this year it feels like yep. a like time ago I know, it does <laughs> i actually know someone who that is his game of the year all right elijah what's her For... game 2020 my yeah, most that. underrated is actually a game I've talked about a lot recently, so I don't have much to say about it. Yeah, it is seven. Morbid, the Seven Acolytes. Uh, Souls-like, uh, 2D game. It, it's super good. I, I love it. it. It just keeps getting better and better. It's a Souls-like 2D game? Yes. It's like 2D open world. Hmm. It, it's super good. Like Everything I liked about it, I like even more now, the more I play it. But is it better than Salt and Sanctuary? I think so. Okay. And Salt and Sanctuary is fantastic. It's really good. Yeah. You know, I heard a lot of good things about that. I and, I really recommend Salt and Sanctuary. I think so you're style. saying this game is even better. Yes. All right. Well, there it is. Frame skip seal of approval. <laughs> That's how you do it. All right. See, Austin, we're moving right along. What's the next oh, category? Yeah. Most biggest disappointment of uh, 2020. George, watch stars off. All right, I talked about this a little bit before. I uh, I don't I don't want to take a particular shot at any game because I think if something came out this year that's like a small miracle, I can't imagine working situations changing so drastically so quickly. That sounds like a nightmare. I don't want to be a part of bashing on anything. So the thing I will bash is me playing PS4 games on my PlayStation 5 by accident. I made fun of smart delivery so much for Xbox for them just doing what they did in... Uh, Mad Men just going, it's toasted. It's like, but everyone's is toasted. It's like, yeah, but you're the first person to say it. I'm like, why would that be an issue? Why do I need to be impressed that you're downloading the best possible version onto my device? Like, I, I don't give my phone an award every time it downloads the iPhone version of an app as opposed to an iPad version of the app. Like, it's not going to get any GD medals for that. But uh, I spent a preponderance of my time playing PS4 versions on my PlayStation 5 completely by accident and had no idea. And like, fixing it was just such a cluster. Like, geez, Louise, it was, I can't believe how easily they just fumbled the ball there in making it so easy for people to play a lower quality version on their brand new box. I think that's 
insane. Now, at least later, they put, like, now they have in a warning to let you know that you're going to play the last-gen version. Didn't the first one and a half, Elijah. They certainly yep. didn't the first six weeks. <laughs> yep. So what were you bashing Xbox for? Or Microsoft, sorry. Oh, because they had smart delivery, which, like, they were really advertising as, like, being state-of-the-art, high-functioning stuff. And, like, I just didn't think that was, like, anything worth beating a drum for. Because I was just like, well, obviously, of course, you're going to send the best quality thing. Why would you put anything less than, like, the Series X version onto a Series X console? That makes no sense. And then Sony just completely boffed it and did okay. everything I made fun of smart delivery for. So Microsoft was right for hammering home that point. I think... I'm not sure if that issue still happened on Series X. I haven't spent any time with the console, so I don't know. And I'm not planning on getting one before Halo comes out, so it's not going to be an issue by the time I grab one. But uh, they were right to really hammer that point home. And Sony, good God, come on, guys. I'm glad you got there, but what took so long? I, I love my Series X for that reason why. All right, awesome. Um, so my joking answer is Coach not showing up to three quarters of this podcast. Um, Bro! <laughs> His real answer is Bro. for Phil. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I gave you my 1X, bro. <laughs> okay, I'll take it back. Okay, my serious answer is Nintendo announcing that Mario 3D All-Stars, Mario 35, and Fire Emblem, what is it, Shadow Dragon, are all getting, like, demolished come March. Like that, that whole announcement of all of that is such a load of crap. That's so stupid. And that was the most frustrating thing for me this year. They're doing I mean, the, the, N the NES Fire Emblem's going to get yeah. removed. Yeah, the one that they just they released two shop. weeks ago. The one they just released two weeks ago. It's oh. the very first Fire Emblem ever. And it. they finally localized it. And uh, that Mario 35, Mario 3D All Stars are literally getting like removed from the face of the planet come March. Did you read Doug Bowser's response to that? He no. he recently came out. He's like, well, this is like a uh, special, you know, that we're doing. So we're not going to keep it there forever, basically. It's a celebration. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I was okay. like, and I know we talked about this before, so I'm not going to harp on it too much. But I do hope that this is the precursor of the uh, NES, or the NES, the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, and the Wii emulators. I what hope is, so, because especially, I mean, not to harp on this too much, but in a year of like a lot of financial instability, I think, you know, people, you know, may not have jobs and may not have bought things or have money to buy things like 3D All-Stars. And it's like just kind of a bad year to do this. So I don't, it's just stupid to me. Check how much but, GameCube games are um, right. online right now. In oh, gosh, yes. Ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Stupid. I've been buying some for a friend. I'm giving him a GameCube for Christmas. Um I told him it was going to be late just because I'm like, I'm assembling like a huge Christmas package. Christmas of 2021? Uh, Christmas of 2020. Like, I'm, it's, it's going to be late. I told him it was going to be late. But like, I'm assembling a like 15 game bundle for him because okay. he never had a GameCube. That's right. cool. Yeah, that's I don't cool. think he had a PS2. Like, he just missed out on so much gaming from that era. Yeah, Lord of the Rings, the third age, the turn-based strategy <laughs> for uh, Lord of the Rings. Sir, I like that. Um, but that I, got, I, I want to tack something on to your disappointment, Austin. The fact that Super Mario Sunshine didn't have, like, uh, GameCube controller compatibility at launch. Yeah. Preposterous. Absolutely like, ridiculous. Like and they GameCube finally updated it. But yeah, like a couple like, weeks after. No, it was like a couple months. They did it, like, was last it really? month. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, end of last month, maybe. So it took a while. Just ridiculous. Yeah. But it may be a little bit more difficult than, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. More difficult than copying and pasting. Like they didn't put they didn't put that much attention or care at all into that package. And that's fine. <laughs> you don't, like, you don't game, think so? I no, do. I don't think so. I think those games still stand up for themselves. Like they're still great games because Nintendo is great at what they do, but I don't think there was any love and attention put into those games whatsoever. I think it was a test more yeah. than anything of the emulator. Because we all know the Nintendo 64 emulator, it, it just does not work on you could have an i7, I don't care what kind of computer. And that N64 uh, emulator is not going to function correctly. So the yeah, fact really, that it did, really <laughs> the fact that it did work better than any of the games on the Wii or the Wii U Virtual Console, I was I was legit happy about that. So I mean, for me, I was okay. I have low standards. My standards are low. It wasn't even that. It was like the presentation of it. Right. I guess. No, and I get you that with that one. Yeah. I think you guys are are missing what Nintendo actually did. And then they looked at Disney and they saw how Disney uses their vault and they they realized how much people love these games. And they realized that if they release them every five years or so, 
and then yep. make them not available in between that they can make a ton of money just like Disney does. And I think that's why they're taking them out. I think that's, that's a really good point. That's a yeah, really good me, point. Man. Like I wasn't going to buy it and then they said it was going away. And then I immediately went on Amazon and pre-ordered yeah. like the, uh, yeah. the physical edition of the trilogy. I mean, you can see it's out there. There's tons of copies out there, but more to Seth's point is Disney's been doing that with um, their VHS back in the nineties. They were doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain Disney movies you just can't find like Hercules. Good luck. You're never going to find it. Um, Dude, and the Black Cauldron until uh, until Disney Plus. Like, that was just impossible to find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we at? Oh, biggest disappointment. All right, Coach, it's up to you. All right. So my biggest disappointment was, and, and this is when I was in, back when I was in Kuwait and we were doing our other podcast, I was always complaining about the publishers and releasing games that were broke, that weren't finished yet. So after a couple of years, it got a lot better, right? We got used to the day one downloads and everything was pretty smooth after the fiasco of uh, the Halo Master Chief collection, right? That was, that was horrible. But more recently with uh, CD Projekt Red, I know it's, the game's going to be amazing. I bought the game. I'm just waiting for um, it to be finally uh, smooth on this Series X, but what frustrated me, my biggest disappointment is when they came out a week after and they apologized for not focusing on the PS4 and the Xbox One editions, which is a bunch of crap because they knew exactly what they were doing. I guess what has given for me gaming a bad, not really image, but what's bad for gaming are the publishers because there needs to be a lemon law. And finally, Sony stood up and said, Hey, Sony did correct on this, you know, and I applaud Sony for this, but just CD project red, not the developers, but the publisher lying to, to all of us. That's what was my biggest disappointment for this year. All right. Elijah, biggest disappointment. I'll keep this super simple. It's deadly premonition two. Uh, I got about 12 hours into the game and I'm going to say 10 hours of it has been fetch quests and not much story. And it's been super disappointing. And I just stopped playing because I'm like, I can't do this. Well, that the was... first one was praised for how bad it was. So the this is a different kind of bad. Also, it runs at like, I'm going to say a steady, like 25 frames per second, sometimes dipping into like single digits. I've seen gameplay videos. It looks awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. does. And the story stuff that I loved with the first one is just not there. So that is disappointing. Yeah. Do you think, and I don't, I'm not asking this ironically. Do you think the budget was too big? And like before it was like them doing what they could with what they had. And then the second time it became them trying to imitate. It's very, very possible. Okay. Cause like, I totally understand like having a shoestring budget and just ambition, just like trying to do what you can with what you have and like having a product that people still unabashedly love. But then this time, Granted, it, there still wasn't, like, so much support behind it from, like, publishers or the fact that I guess there was so much more attention to it and they had to have had a bigger budget for this one than they did for the first one. Like, I, I don't know. That, that's always, like, such a weird corner of gaming for me. One of the biggest problems is there are a bunch of fetch quests in the first one, but it's always so-and-so is looking for this and it's going to be like, okay, I know exactly where I can go to get this. A lot of the ones in the second one are RNG-based. So it's just, like... I'm running through this park. Let me see if any of what I need is laying on the ground. Nope. All right. I'll go do something else and then maybe come through again and see if any are there. Like I said, in the first one, it was just, oh, I need this. I know exactly where to go get that. Nothing yeah. wrong with a shorter game. You don't have to pad it out with a uh, weird fetch quest that exactly. uh, may or may not happen. You don't have to do that. Give me a good 10 hour game. That's fine. The, one of the main missions literally was just, hey, in order for me to help you, I'm going to need you to get insert three random things here. That was just three fetch quests in order to do the main mission to get the doctor to be like, yeah, I'll take a look at you. And I'm like, why did you need like bacon, a doll and a cricket? All right. <laughs> why did he need it, though? I don't know. He Son just asked for it. I brought it to him. and He's like, all right, I'll answer your question now. <laughs> I mean, that sounds kind of great. All right, my uh, biggest disappointment of 2020, uh, Mirroring Coach, is going to be Cyberpunk. <clears throat> I bought Cyberpunk, and I've been playing it on PC. 
And the disappointment for me is not in the Bucky unfinished nature of the game. It's in the fact that it's such a tragedy. Because when you play the game, and I, I, of course I'm playing on PC, I'm like, so, I'm a super strong, uh, extremely powerful PC, is that you can tell that like this game was just, just almost there. Like it was, it's just a hair away from being something truly, truly great. And I, um, I thought I was going to come back last week, but I ended up getting really busy. And I, I have a whole bunch of notes here about my first like. 10 hours of the game and you can feel like how much work the design department did in cyberpunk because the ambiance and the music and like the environments they all just look incredible but the game plays not great It, it plays like a game that came out eight years ago and it was started development about eight years ago so that makes sense but um especially the driving the driving's awful in the game but it's just so close. Like if the game just had another year and they should have given it the other year, but at some point, probably last year or earlier in 2020, they had to have some hard conversations and there had to be a conversation like, Hey, we've sunk eight years into development for this game and it didn't work. It's not working. We got to get it out. And then they, they, they were probably like, okay, like, like, so I don't know. I'm super torn, man. Like, I want to play it, but also I'm like, I should wait for it to be, like, the best version. I'm like, no, you should play it now so you can see what a goddamn train wreck it is. I'm like, no, you should play it on your PlayStation 5 because that's, like, giving it the best chance. I'm like, no, you should play it on your PlayStation 4 because that's hilarious. Like, just waste like, $60. Well, like, just trying to decide, like, do I want to be a part of this conversation or do I want to be, like, I guess a bit more objective about the game when it's actually closer to a finished product, you know? There's um, certain things in the game that I don't think they are going to fix that I think are a huge problem. Like the fact that the vehicles are essentially weightless. That drives me absolutely insane. The driving mechanics in the game are awful. And I don't understand how after all this time and how many great driving games have come out, but you can't look at this and as you're making it and be like, this isn't right. Something, this is completely all wrong. Um, And there's like, there's, there's a bug that I know is super, super common because me and two other people that I randomly talked to about the game, Right in the opening, when you leave the first radio tower, like the first 20 minutes of the game, you're driving back through the town, and there's just a dude floating in the air right above the road, and you hit him, and the cops come after you. In the first 10 minutes of the game. I swear to God, it's the first 10 minutes of the game. And it's like, he's just floating there. You can't even see him because he's off the road. You're not looking there. But whatever. So I played about the first two hours, Seth. Yeah. And just to see what it was about, because I knew that I would really sink my teeth into it once we get, like, uh, version 1.10, like we're at 1.6 right now. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't see, I didn't see any glitches or anything like that. So, um, but the driving is a little, I haven't seen any, no. So, but, um, yeah, like, so I'm going to wait till, you know, it really gets, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to wait till the, the big series X, um, download, but I will wait to where it's, you know, tons more stable. But what, what were you saying about the driving in the game? That I could feel that it was like weightless too. Yeah, it, I, I don't like it. And yeah. I, don't, I don't like how they, for some reason, delayed the PS5 and Series X versions of the game, but released the PS4 and Xbox One versions of the game. And that doesn't make any yeah, sense. I don't, I don't yeah. know. I think, like, 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 even financially, that makes no sense at all. Unless they were trying to just get a big chunk of money for, for the end of the year to put themselves for in, in the investor meeting. I don't know, but well, they, they sold 15 million copies or 13 to 15 million copies. Some insane number. You yeah. Know? They sold, they sold yeah. a ton of, a ton of copies, but you, and it, Hey, by the way, it's a great time to buy CD project stock. If you're wondering, yep. uh, but it can only be bought in Poland, but yes, but um, yeah, man, it's, it's a, it's a real tragedy because of all the good, like trust that they have built with the, uh, community Witcher three and the Witcher three and Witcher two and, and even the Witcher one, they supported those games for years and they came out and they were playable. The Witcher three had a few problems, but it wasn't broken, you know, and the Witcher three is a wonderful game and cyberpunk. It was so close to being a wonderful game. And that's why I'm disappointed because when you play it, you can feel how much work went into it and how much work from certain sections of the team went into this. And then you, you're like, you're playing it and you're like, ah, it plays like a 10 year old game. 
when we get the, in like a year or two, when we get the 20 hour DLC, right? I think that's when they'll really like nip everything in the bud. You know, I mean, I think it's going to be, at some point, it's going to be one of the greatest games of this generation or, I mean, it, it expands both generations, but um, that's why I'm not bummed about it being all buggy and all messed up. It's just the lies, but go ahead, George. Um, well, I was going to say, like, I've listened to a bunch of like uh, game of the year discussions and I've read a bunch of articles on it just because I, I just like that stuff. Um, just people being romantic about it. And everyone's just like, well, Witcher 3 wasn't perfect when it came out. I can't remember a single problem with The Witcher 3. And honestly, my memories of CD Projekt Red, I never had a PC. I didn't really play my 360 that much in college except for like Halo. So I had no attachment to like Witcher 2. Um, so I didn't really know them until I grabbed Witcher 3, but like, they just seemed like the coolest devs in all of gaming. Like the mm -hmm. fact that like this game was so huge and so massive and it just, it made Skyrim look archaic by comparison, yeah. you know, yeah. and it came out only a few years later and like Fallout 4 came out similar, like a, maybe like a year or two later, um, after Witcher 3 and it just made Bethesda look like dinosaurs and the fact that like the DLC like you said coach it's like it's always on sale to the point where it feels like they're just giving you a 50 hour 40 hour game for free you yeah. know like those bundles are like 4.99 or whatever <laughs> like for for Iron and Wine or whatever that one's called that might just be the band Blood and Wine uh, Iron Blood and Wine sorry yes Iron there it is. Iron and Wine is the band my apologies um but it seems like all they wanted to do is just like garner goodwill and it just sucks that like they kind of cashed it in on this one, you know, like they, they seem so corporate. cool. Yeah. They seem so cool from the outside. And then everyone's just like, uh, guys, this is kind of a big red flag. Um, yeah. My favorite thing was when they apparently didn't tell the PR person about the delay and <laughs> <laughs> the guy tweeted, all right, just to be sure the game is coming out on November 19th, right? I'm going to request off today. And the PR person is like, yes, um, for sure, coming out t t November 19th. And the next day, they delayed it until <laughs> December. <laughs> and everybody's response was, uh, guys, you should, uh, you at the very least, you got to give this guy a free copy of the game. You just screwed him over royally. <laughs> so the CEO even came out that the current gen, which was PS4 and Xbox One, they're running flawless. You know, I don't think he said flawless, but they're they're running uh, high performance on those systems, which was a lie. Very much. All right. Let's move into something a little more hopeful. Best anticipated game of 2021 and beyond. George, hit us off. Whew. All right. Uh, kind of a cheat answer. I've got like three half answers. I'm not like super excited for anything. Uh, okay. I'm really curious about Final Fantasy 16. I'm really looking forward to that. That trailer got me hyped. Um, we'll talk about why I'm hyped in a little bit. Wink. Um, I'm really looking forward to the new sets coming out on Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, I want to spend more time. They got like a Viking theme set called Kaldheim coming up, which I'm really excited about because they're doing more with Dwarf Tribal and Dragons. And I'm just, and they're introducing like the Norse gods to like the uh, Magic Pantheons. So, like I'm very excited for that. Uh, but I think my real number one answer is anything Star Wars. Like, I've been reading a bunch of Star Wars comics lately. The Mandalorian just finished, like, a week or two ago. They announced a whole bunch of stuff at D23, or pseudo D23. So just give me anything Star Wars. Like, uh, Old Republic, or not Old Republic, sorry, uh, Jedi Fallen Order was just, like, such a great surprise where, like, I thought for sure Respawn would be making, like, Republic Commando 2 or something. And just to, like, get an uncharted style game with i'm not gonna say souls like combat but like i don't have like a better comparison but like with intense thoughtful combat i guess put into it melee combat like that was so great and then squadrons i have problems with it but like it's a really well-made game i'm not denying that so like any anything star wars like i just want to see ea like really take advantage of having this license yeah, I've been on a big Star Wars kick too lately, and I also have got caught up in the comics. The Vader comics were incredible. Oh, dude, did you read the last one? Um. Know, the 2020 Vader? Yes. Is no, it on Marvel Unlimited Vader. yet? I don't know, but I'm all caught up. It, it's okay. um, it's insane. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I'm not going to say, but it's insane. All right. uh, so yeah, anything Star Wars is my answer. Like, I want to see yeah. more. I want to see more experimental stuff. Like, the way that they just sort of, like, give, like, the little developers stuff, like, uh, unraveled. Like, I, w I, w I would even love, like, a small-scale Star Wars game, but, like, just something set in that universe just to... Yeah 
keep me keep me happy you know just- i think that we're going to get that in 2021 george small scale kind of like squadron scale i think that's what we're going to get for for next year um, give me a versus mode in fallen order how about that that's what i want to see oh really like jedi outcast style yeah like, a, yeah. like a, you put an arena 1v1 because that gameplay is perfect all that's right a great idea austin most anticipated game bud um this probably comes as a as a surprise to literally nobody but monster hunter rise comes out in three months and um i will be playing that game for the next like five years so (laughs) that that is like i mean there's there's no other option like it's that game i will say second choice way down is mass effect trilogy okay okay so is that 2021 yeah it's uh February? February? Yeah. Is it remaster of all three or just the first one? Like games? yeah, it's all three. Okay, remaster of all it's all three. three. And should have been 2017, but here we are. Um, yep, yep. Agreed with that. All also, right, wait. my most anticipated game of 2021 is Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! <laughs> Fitting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like like George said, it should have came out uh, in 2017, and we've been waiting way too long, and I've wanted to play these games over again forever, and I haven't been able to, but I'm really upset about it. And my best friend today screen uh, video chatted me. Screen called. I don't, I don't know why I said that. Come on, Grandpa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he video chatted me, and uh, I've been trying to get him to play Mass Effect for years. And for, for some reason today, he decided to buy it. And he he showed me a picture of a screen. He's like, wait a minute, zoom out. And he did, I was like, is that Mass Effect 1? And he's like, yeah, you told me for years to play it. And I'm like, dude, refund it. Like, that's like legendary <laughs> editions coming out <laughs> no idea um but yeah dude i can't wait i can't wait to play through that story again that's like 150 hours of just pure sci-fi sexual pleasure and i am just ready for that all right gun to your head though do you yeah. want an exact remake that runs flawlessly with like no load times or anything like that or do you want them to go in and do like uh was it Blue Point? And just do like little little twit like little uh twitch fixes like they did with Demon Souls. No, they need they need to fix Mass Effect one for sure. Yeah, one for at sure for sure needs to have some sort of fixes. Cause when that was, game when, is was, like when was the last rough. time you guys played Mass Effect One? Uh three three years ago. This summer. Uh, five years ago for me. Yeah, this, I played it this year. Really not that bad. I understand what you're saying. I'm not saying it can't be improved. I'm not yeah. saying it can't be improved. I'm just saying it's not that I'm bad. It's bad. awful, George. I'm Honestly, the load times are what kill me in that game. Like that, the load times are bad. The load times are bad. The texture pop in is bad. Like I just when it, with a remaster like that, I don't know if I just wanted to like no, just make it the same except run flawlessly the way the creators wish it could, or like no, like fix the textures on his armor. Like like it, it's just like stuff like that where I'm just like no, add some more wrinkles. Like I want to see Garrus's like weird hair things move, like his tentacle move. So this he, is this runs. is what they said. The remaster will also feature downloadable con- uh, download content, of those Fire unknown, sky, and all DLC will be included this time. It will also include enhanced textures, shaders, models, effects, and technical features of three enormous games. And they stated that the goal of the remaster was not to remake or reimagine the original games, but to modernize the experience so that fans and new players can experience the original work in its best possible form. It sounds like they're not going to mess with it too much. They're just going to make it as good as possible. But it's also weird because I know when they remade Mass Effect 2 for PlayStation 3, they put that on Mass Effect 3's engine. Right. So, like, I wonder if they, like, I don't know if that game still works on Mass Effect 3's engine, like the the third, the first one. I don't know. I think it's a good engine, though. I yeah, mean, the, the, games, yeah. the games still look good. Also, are we totally getting together for Mass Effect 3 Fireteam stuff? Is that coming back? I would oh, dude, if it comes back, absolutely. I would assume yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. If they do the multiplayer, then yeah, I'm in. Was it was game. great. I love no, the multiplayer. No, you're not invited. <laughs> you're not invited to this Mass Effect club. Sorry, you had 10 Fine. years. I'll play with other people then. <laughs> Screw you, Seth. You had 10 years. We don't want you in our Mass Effect club anymore. Ship's a whole fool, buddy. I'll Normandy's you, got a full crew, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the Normandy got exploded once. I can do it again. Um, Coach, most anticipated game. Well, unannounced Breath of the Wild 2. but. I'm almost positive that this will come out uh, in the fall slash holiday of 2021, which is Halo Infinite. 
Oh, I did like the way that it looked like they kind of went old school, like back to Halo Combat Involved. So I was excited about that. But I'm very skeptical with the story because since 343 has gotten it, the story has been subpar. So I heard um, the last story yeah. is like really bad. The what? Four, horrible. four is good. Five was mm-hmm. like. Five doesn't have a story. I don't know what you're talking I about. I try not to be negative. Like the gameplay is the best it's ever been in any yes, of the Halo games. True. In five. That's like, right. Halo Five plays yes. perfectly, but that story is just awesome. I'm sorry, it's dog man. Yeah, like it is it so is. trash. It is so bad. It got um, hit so- hard too. Like the when the reviews came out, everybody hit hard on that. Was so this like story. they're they're batting 500 right now, which. Ain't ain't the worst, but also like, man, this I, yeah. this is a make or break g- game for that studio. I think like they could they could lose the mantle and to borrow my, a Halo reference. <laughs> my biggest problem with Halos four and five is to fully understand what goes on in the games. You need to read books, yeah. And yeah. I don't think you should need to uh, take in the side material in order to understand the main material. Like Agreed. the movie Donnie Darko makes more sense on your first viewing than the first time you play Halo Four. Like, like yeah. that's really all I can say. Like that ga- yeah. that game is just so confusing the first time you watch, it, the first time you play it. Much like Donnie Darko is Guardians. What? That crazy the first time you play. I'm gonna it. say it, and I'm not gonna regret it, and I'm gonna draw a line in the sand. Make this make this my my dying point. Donnie Darko sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is strictly fine. I didn't. I didn't it's, mean to ruffle any feathers. This feels like a point of contention for the podcast that I was not aware of. Meanwhile, um, it's like my third favorite movie of all time. All right. Yeah, out. Okay. So, right. uh, uh, Halo Four makes less sense than Inception the first time you watch. Is that a better one? Am I yeah. pissing okay. anyone off yeah. with that? Right. Inception. Inception has an purposefully annoying ending that I don't like, but it's it, it's passable. Yeah, like, it all it, makes. I mean, sense. You're, you're, you can't get mad for ambiguity. Like that's the whole. That was the whole point of that. But like, it made sense. It was just yeah. ambiguous. Yeah. yeah. Did you watch his last movie? Not yet. I have it. I'm waiting for a night off from work to watch it. I'm so excited. I really want to watch it. I saw it um, in the theater, and I'm going to have to watch it about three more times. The concept of time travel is a lot different. So, yeah. All right, Elijah. This this bit of game. My it's most interesting game. Crap, I swear to God, is Kena Bridge of Spirits. Oh. oh. Uh, I like it. it. Awesome. It looks, yeah, I love it. It looks super good. It has a an adorable art style. Uh, it, I, I don't really know much about the game yet. The rots are so super cute and it looks fun. Okay. Yeah. And they haven't made any other games before. In fact, the only you know, thing. I knew it was too short. I knew you wasn't going to leave it at that. Yeah, the only things they made <laughs> were commercials in China for Coca-Cola and a random Majora's Mask, yeah. uh, like tribute video. I didn't realize they made that until I think you told me, which yep. is interesting because I had seen that before. It was super high quality. All right. So, hey, Move Seth, me on. Yeah. Let's say we quick fire a few listener most anticipated. Well, Did everybody know? answer? Yeah. 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 Okay. Why don't you quick fire them for me there, Austin? Okay. Uh, best friend of the show and misser of Seth Wetham Slakehouse Alden. Well, you don't have to miss him anymore, buddy. He's here. He's back. <laughs> I forgot about wet hams. <laughs> That's right. How could you forget? Uh, he said his most anticipated is Horizon Forbidden West. Oh, okay. Great choice. That's a good Great. one. Uh, Brandon Nature Hoot said his is Breath of the Wild 2. Good choice. If I say so myself, right, coach? Yep. Give that choice about a C minus. Whatever. Everybody's allowed to be C-. wrong. C-. And this person I've never heard of. Andy, she says her choice is uh, Monster Hunter World. I mean, Monster Hunter Rise, rather. Okay. So, wait, sorry, I don't follow Monster Hunter. Is that in the Monster Hunter World style of game, or is this going back to, like, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate? Oh, no, they it's all, a sequel they to the movie. Age. It's a sequel to the movie. Yeah, it's starring Mila Jovovich. You and... joke, but that would give no, me way more. No, United Monster, States Marines. That's Monster Hunter World now. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, they all build on each other, so it's it's basically like a continuation of worlds mechanics. Gotcha. Okay. Have you so. watched the movie, Austin? Oh no, and I don't plan on it. Don't be it's, a baby; just watch it. It's getting I'm better. Not gonna, I'm not going to pay twenty dollars to go see that in the theater. It is don't getting go, better reviews the than the first Resident Evil movie did. Well, the first Resident Evil movie holds up. That movie still it slaps. does. Yeah. It really does. Mm-hmm. 
All right. I'll take the second one over the first. Uh, best yeah. gaming moment of 2020, Georgie boy. All right. Um, this was a weird, bad year. This was a, a year where you weren't allowed to spend time with people, but all you wanted to do was connect with them. Uh, so friend of the show, uh, Fabio, he came on with Elijah and I for our PlayStation 5 podcast. That rhymed. Known this dude for almost, going on almost 10 years now. Love this guy to pieces. Uh, we played through every single Halo game together uh, from the Master Chief Collection. We did 1, 2, 3. We did Reach. We did 4. We did 5. We did ODST. And it was just such a blast. Um, and so my specific memory is just every single time we got into a Warthog together, especially at the end of the first Combat Evolved. Just something really special about uh, racing your friend in a Warthog and then one of you dying and then uh, having to respawn uh, with the other person <laughs> because they, they made the jump and you did not. Uh, just, oh God, great. That game is 19 years old. That game still is so good. Like, that game is still very playable today. Good grief. Um, so just... many good memories with Halo. I wish Reach wouldn't mm -hmm. have ruined the series for me. Oh my God, Reach was the best Reach story. Was the best one. Reach was the best one. Not though. Is Rogue One the best Star Wars movie that they made in the last ten years? Yep, no. tied for second. Oh, in the last ten years, yeah. Okay, well, it's the same goddamn story. So you're an idiot for not liking Halo Reach, you idiot. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's the same goddamn story. It's the same exact story. Rogue One and Halo Reach are the same oh, exact. Okay. True. Hey man, I never said I had a problem with the story. I just said it ruined the the game for me, the series. Uh, with the what, with the power ups, like with the Spartan lockup and all that stuff. That was in three. That was in four. There was there was power ups in three. Oh well, then what's then? How did it ruin the series? They got rid of the assault rifle. Oh, I'm sorry, and gave it. Yeah, they got rid of the assault rifle and replaced it with the battle rifle. And no, they had the assault rifle. It just had a 32 bullet clip. Yeah, but and they but they pretty much replaced the assault rifle with the battle rifle, which was a single shot, and the whole game became a sniper match in every single multiplayer game. And I hated that. That sounds like a personal problem. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like you're ugly, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> oh, no! My God. Oh, I'm just no! kidding. I'm just kidding. I love your Christmas. Move on to player. someone you're... else's favorite moment. I gotta, I gotta go lick my wounds. Yeah, I love you, George. <laughs> I love you too, George. This is a joke. Don't take it seriously. I love you. You're beautiful. Uh, All right, Austin. I love, I love you too. Best gaming moment. I originally was gonna say it was it was uh, getting my Oculus Quest two and, and messing around with that, and that was a great time and is a great time still, obviously. Um, but honestly, like the thing that's had the biggest impact for me this year, not to get too meta, is starting this podcast again. Um, I've had okay. a phenomenal time doing the show with you guys again and, and bringing George onto it. Um, I really missed doing, uh, I guess it was R&M. We, we stopped for, how long did we stop for? Like two years, three, three years? years? Three years. Three years, yeah. I really missed it that whole time. And um, it's been a blast getting to talk to you guys every week again and and connecting again, I felt like I didn't talk to everyone that much after things yeah, stopped, and so it's it's been good connecting with everybody mm -hmm. again. And the coach band's just, back I together, know, except for Coach, because you know, he just like, doesn't hear that much. <laughs> and George was a necessary pull, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, you say was or wasn't necessary. Sorry, was was. Oh, thank you. Oh, sorry, I wasn't sure if we were still being mean to George or not. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you're you're essential. It's been so nice being here. Like I came on as like a guest over the summer. Uh, I listened before, but man, it's just it's so nice to like actually be a part of the conversations and and to like have like honestly like the podcasts are great, but the Slack is just like my favorite thing. It's just so nice to have immediate access to people who like have the same dumb opinions that I do <laughs> at, at just at just like a moment's notice. And it's just like oh man, here's a drunken thought I have at one thirty. I wonder if anyone's awake. Elijah will write back within five minutes. And it's like <laughs> oh, I just woke up at eleven thirty, super hungover. And I'm like oh man, Austin had fourteen things to say. Like of course he did. And it's <laughs> it's just been so great having like a, a little mini, uh, mini just new nerd family that I didn't really have before. Just because like yeah, I like reached out to you guys on Twitter. I know we met a couple times, but like it's just so nice to like actually have like complete access it's been cr incredible <laughs> <laughs> you've been granted entrance to the temple <laughs> all right my best gaming moment of 2020 was playing the demo of final fantasy 7 remake um because they dropped this and then i got to experience that intro 
And I think I was smiling from ear to ear the whole time. I played it like five times. I wouldn't stop. And unfortunately, it did ruin the intro of the actual game for me. And I didn't enjoy it anymore by the time the actual game came out. But when I first got to sit down, I remember I I started home from work that day and installed it because I had to work that night. And then I stayed up for uh, an hour and a half and played the game. I didn't get hardly any sleep that day, but I just remember smiling from ear to ear, just being so excited and hearing the music for the first time and seeing those characters actually getting to play this game that I'd been so excited for for most of my adult life. Um, that was my biggest moment for 2020. I'll never forget, uh, it was the morning after PAX. We would stay at a hotel that night and then go home the next day. And I wake up in the morning and check my phone. Nick is still asleep. I check my phone, and I just see tweets. And I'm just like, and I just yell, "Oh my god, Nick! They released the they released the demo on PSN." We and, gotta go. Get and, in the car. And he's just like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I've never seen him wake up so fast because the whole time they had the demo at PAX, and we're like, "Should we wait in line to play it?" I don't know. The game comes out soon, and then before we even get home, it's released on PSN. So we're like, "All right, <laughs> get." up we gotta go we didn't we didn't waste time in line for two hours to play the demo two days beforehand all right uh coach so right so honorable mention will be um austin's graduation in uh animal crossing that was a real that was a really really fun moment and it felt special right it felt really really cool and Andy went out of her way to to make it good. But my number one moment in gaming this year, and it'll be a top five all time, was when I came uh, face-to-face with Vader in uh, for the first time in Vader Immortal. And just my heart beating because you see him on screen as a kid growing up. You read the books, the comics. But now it's like you are in that reality. Um, and he's he's much taller than you and uh yep. it blew me away you know and i can't really spoil the end of episode 1 but that was the best part you know yep. what happens at the end of episode 1 so i have i bought 2 and 3 over uh thanksgiving week so um real cheap so i'll finish those but yeah it has to be coming face to face with vader and just being like Thinking of the Anakin in the Clone Wars animated, like this is that dude, man. Yeah, and you know what? Like, I, like truth be told, I've always thought Darth Vader was kind of like a lame villain. Like, I never really liked him as a villain. He always moved real stiff and slow, and and then when I finally saw him in Vader Immortal, I got it. I'm like, oh, this dude is terrifying. And then I threw a couple jabs at his face and like right hooked him. Of course, it didn't do anything, but I, I would have won, one hundred percent. I was gonna, I was ready to outbox Darth Vader, like it was happening. Austin, when, when's this episode coming out? Should probably New Year's Day. New Year's probably Day. New Year's All right. Day. So the, there's a sale on PlayStation Network going on. Uh, I'm gonna grab Jedi Outcast, whichever one is on sale for like ten bucks, and they also have right. a, Episode One Racer, like the N64 version, <laughs> is uh, on sale. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy Vader Immortal now, like just just from just Please from hearing do. that. It's and like so I know good, I'm, yeah. I'm playing on PlayStation VR, which I know is the inferior VR. I like, mean, that's where I played it. I watched a long play of Shadow of the Empire last night on N64, and that game is like trash. So, like, yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm in the mood for more Star Wars. I'm ready. I'm ready for. So you do a, have a, a PlayStation VR game. though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude, play it because it, it, it sounds like that's fine. exactly it's what so you're good. looking for. Because yeah. like you said, you wanted more Star Wars, and Vader Immortal is fantastic. And like oh. I said. Vader walks in the room for the first time. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, okay. Oh, I still okay. need to play two and three. I only played the first one as well. Yeah, so it, it, I need it, to get around to it. I think the episodes just get better and better. The thing that got me though were the heights. I am I am scared of heights. Yes. Yeah, and that. when you yeah. have to when you have to climb his castle, yep. bro. Bro it terrified me. I had to like touch the floor just to remind my senses that I'm not in this world that there's a floor you see those funny videos where people like jump and they have their vr headset and they crash through the tv because they 
forget where they're at, you know? So Dude, I, it, in blood and truth, you had to like climb through a construction site. And I like almost had a panic attack when I was doing that. I, I, I hate heights. Heights are so stupid. They're so stupid. <laughs> They're so stupid. The fundamental law of physics is so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. I, I hate agree. them so much. Um, my favorite um, VR moment of all time, I think, is when Elijah came and let me try on his PlayStation VR for the first time. And I was playing Sick. Batman. And then our other friend knocked on the door. because I And it was, they were at my place. And I was so immersed. And you, I was standing at a table in the game that I tried to put the 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 um controllers down on the table i dropped them on the floor <laughs> and i was like oh wait that's actually not a table there <laughs> my, my b my b elijah my, sorry <laughs> my my favorite vr moment Oops. ever was playing uh skyrim vr and it was really a moment of i forgot i'm in vr just like seth said because you know i'm walking i have shield in one hand sword in the other and out of the corner of my eye i just see something and it's a wolf and it goes to lunge at me and just natural instinct, I just covered my face. And then the wolf hit the shield and bounced off. And I'm like, oh, right. I have a shield. I was just shielding my face because, oh, my God, there's a wolf lunging at me. All right. Nice. Best gaming moment of 2020, Elijah. I'm going to keep this short. It was Austin's graduation. Right. Thank you. It was super fun. Which you can fun. watch on YouTube, on the French Kid YouTube channel. Thanks for the invite, turds. You weren't around the family then. Yeah. You, know, you didn't exist you then, George. <laughs> I was really drunk. I assume you did you graduate in May? Yes. I was really drunk for most of May. I was not in a very good place with the pandemic. So. That you was were just fighting COVID, right? You, you had all that alcohol. Yeah. You were fighting. You were prepping your system. Yeah, I, I was putting like a fire blanket on the inside of my belly. Uh, in, in, <laughs> inside of my entire body for COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. that was Fast and Furious 4. And you don't come in until Fast 5 as The Rock. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> what? I mean, George, nice. I'm a superhero. Love the analogy. I have a girlfriend. Stop flirting with me so much. <laughs> That's why I called you ugly, ugly earlier. I was trying to neg you a little bit. Uh, I mean, it's, I work. to, it's, it's I working. Had, I had to break <laughs> you down. I hate you, but I want your approval. It's working. I had to break <laughs> you down so we can build you back up. All right, let's move on to the next uh, category. Unless you were, did, you want to drop some more awards in there for the from the audience, Austin? Uh, let's see. So that was. Best we're doing all right on moment. gaming moments. To, there were a few that people that didn't answer that question. Uh, Alden, I'm, I'll just stick with Alden. He said, "Climbing the ranks in Apex often with Elijah." It was fun. Oh, Always fun. Good it's, one. It's a goddamn Still audio podcast, me. Elijah. You clicking and pointing finger guns at the camera doesn't mean anything. <laughs> when you guys play, are you on Discord? Yes. Okay. Still need to play more of that game. And I love how it's crossplay now. I took two dubs last night. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I accidentally happened. took one last night. The I fists. didn't even realize. Didn't even realize it, it was at the end. And we just killed someone. It comes up champion. I'm like, oh, right. Cool. All right. I guess that, that's it for the audience awards. Yeah, that's oh, it. Okay. <laughs> Best game you played for the first time in 2020. Take it away, Georgie boy. All right. This one was the toughest one for me to narrow down. My first episode with you guys, I talked about playing Infamous, getting ready for Ghost of Tsushima, want to go through and play all Sucker Punch's games. That one's definitely up there. Uh, I just played the very first Spyro for the first time, like the remaster, the Reignited trilogy. And it was nice because like, I started Mario 64 not that long before, but I stopped playing because it was like nostalgia. And I'm like, oh, I think I really only like like the first area of levels, like the first like grand lobby hall area. But I have no nostalgia attachment to Spyro, so it was just really nice just playing like this game that evoked a lot of similar feelings to when I was a kid, but like just doing that as an adult and everything so bright and like the sound effects are fun and it's such a weird, crappy year. Like that was just really nice. But I think my favorite first time play, it's gotta be Final Fantasy X, man. That game is oh. that game's really good. And that's that was the first time that like a non-Pokemon turn-based RPG really just like clicked with me, where I'm just like, this is incredibly weird incredibly cool this is everything i thought i didn't like about a lot of games but it's all just gelling together really well and God, final fantasy 10 so good so how'd you like how'd you like those puzzles though um i'll be honest i didn't even finish the game like i'm like probably ah. 20 20 hours into the game um i accidentally packed my vita in storage so i haven't been able to continue and so i actually just bought 
the PlayStation 4 version, and, and I'm hoping to download my cloud save and continue playing on my so, PlayStation 4. There is like notoriously hard parts in Final Fantasy X. Don't try to 100% the game. It's not worth it. No, I'm going to platinum that. I promise. Don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, for me, it's like dodging the lightning 50 times. Uh, that, that seems... That's not even the worst one. The worst one is the Chocobo races. Oh, really? It's really, it's really, really hard. Yeah. To get the ultimate weapons, it's super hard. All right. Guys, Austin's tired. Well, Austin needs to suck it up. Austin, what's your best game you played this year? <laughs> <laughs> well... Um, it was not Spider-Man or Beat Saber, which I almost chose both of those. Um, but it was Pistol Whip, which I just bought literally like a week ago. And it is essentially, imagine John Wick mixed with Beat Saber, kind of. It's it's essentially you're like kind of in a God mode kind of movie, but it's like set to music. And so you're like killing people in VR. Um, you're kind of trying to kill them like with the rhythm. But it's not, it, I guess in a way you could compare the mechanics to like super hot a little bit, like the way it plays. Um, but the difference is there's no slow motion in this game. So when people shoot you, you have to move like fast, very fast. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot. It's super intense. And like I said, I just got it on sale actually like last week, but um, I was waiting on it for Oculus Quest um, ever since I bought my Quest back in like August or whenever that was. Um, I was waiting on it to go on sale and it finally did. I had heard so many good things and it still just blew me away. So it's an you amazing talk, game. You talked about it in the chat. It's on sale for like 16 bucks on PSN. Yep. Like it's, yeah. in my, it's in my shopping cart because you talk so highly about it's it. It's a phenomenal game and it is super active. It is like the, the first day after I played it, I only played it for like maybe 20 minutes and my calves were like killing me. I so. got it because of Austin <laughs> saying about how good it is. And yeah, it's amazing. Also, I'm listening to EDM now, and that's weird. <laughs> so play that. Play Pistol Whip if you have VR. Of yeah, sort. the gateway yeah. drug to EDM, apparently. Can we just <laughs> shout out the return in, in the last decade of the man named Keanu Reeves? And oh, please. How he's blessed the world. Definitely. I mean, he went off the grid after Matrix 3, and he comes back and just makes bangers. Just puts out bangers, man. And he just comes out. He's like, yo, what's up? John Wick 4, The Matrix 4, same day. <laughs> I'm about to double feature your ass, bud. Like, what's up? I'm in. <laughs> Dude, not He's even that. Best. But didn't he make that one movie where, like, he has a threesome with, like, two students yes. of his? Yes, and, uh, on yeah. Netflix. <laughs> and that oh, was yeah. actually a great movie, too. I love yeah. that movie. They weren't his students. They were just, like, random girls that just... Uh, they, yeah, were... they seduced him, and then they tried to kill him for it. Yeah, yeah that one was good. And then uh, Destination Wedding, which is, like, not a great movie, but it's one I enjoy watching. It's, like, him and Winona Ryder, hmm. where, like, they're both, like, solos going to a wedding. Dude, yeah. he played himself in a movie, and I can't. The one on from was. Netflix, a few one on Netflix, ago, yeah. Where yeah. he was just like a total douchebag the entire time. Yeah, and he's and like, hit me. Hit me. I'm Keanu Reeves. Hit me. I'm like, it was the best role of the year. Yeah. Uh, always be my maybe. That was I, the one. Yeah, yeah. With Randall Park and Ali Wong. Yeah, yeah. man, he was. That, that part was incredible. Sorry, Austin. <laughs> time stamp it. But that movie was great. <laughs> stamp it again. <laughs> <laughs> just types it in angrily. One hundred six thirteen, baby. <laughs> Jerks. Yeah, Keanu, Reeves, Keanu Reeves is a legend, and he's like a super yeah. good dude. And because he's not part of the whole Hollywood, you know how all the yeah. actors and actresses are. He's not part of that. So same with Brad Pitt. You know, best game I played in twenty twenty was Trails of Cold Steel two. It takes everything that the first game had terrible about it and fixes it and it's great i love it it's a great rpg the I first game I, those games. the first game i have a really hard time recommending because everyone told me it pays off in the end and they were right but it takes 80 hours to get there the whole the first 79 hours of the game are terrible they're super boring <laughs> i'm really interested to start it up i have the first one on vita but i want to wait until i get the second one to play it i hope you that, love that, super that's long such dumb dad logic just play the 
first game. <laughs> I should just play. Just play. Okay, sorry. 10750. 10750. I'm sorry. Uh, just play the first game, you idiot. You don't need the second game to play the first game. <laughs> I know, but just if don't I like it, I won't be able to start the next one. Don't what? play them on Vita either. No, I, don't play them on Vita. No. What would I play them on? PS4. No. It, it's a long RPG. I will. I prefer to play it on Vita. The third and fourth one are only on PS4. Yeah, I'll play them on PS4 then. Because I have to. You're not going to transfer your character after 160 hours? I'm going to punch you in the head. Nope. <laughs> mm, anger, rage! <laughs> what was that? I was blowing him a kiss. <laughs> oh, okay. How dare you? Your romance options? All the time you spend with these characters, you're just going to be like, Kobe in the trash can? Yep. Too soon, bro. It's not too soon. I don't even know him. <laughs> yeah, he never he never texted Seth back. So. <laughs> Coach, what's the best game you played in 2020? So easily Jedi Fallen Order. And um once I got hooked in, I, there was no stopping. Like I was playing four or five hours, and I don't get that much time. I was losing sleep to get through this game. And I'm not gonna say a lot because um I know a lot of people still haven't played this game, but you know it's good when the main character is, you know, when people are talking about who's going to come in and in the season finale of Mandalorian 2, and he's one of the, the Jedis that they're talking about that could make an appearance. So um, he, it, it's an amazing game, and it's beautiful to look at, and especially that first that first area was... Probably my favorite area of the whole game. Really? The first one? Yeah, Not just be because the of the... Cl- one? Well, no, because... Well, okay. the That was different, but this is to look at. Mm. It's because of the Clone Wars connection. Because the last you know, one was terrifying. Yeah, it, it was. You're right. It was. You're like, holy hell. <laughs> kept, kept it clean. Get me out! Yeah. Um. All right. Elijah, you're up. Best game 2020. First time. The best game I played for the first time this year is Deadly Premonition. Oh. Uh, I've never played it before. I've always wanted to. I heard it is super bad, and that makes it super good. And playing it, it has become one of my favorite games of all time. I got the Platinum on PS3, and I enjoyed everything about that game. What? PS what? PS3. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying I shouldn't tell you I was playing Tomb Raider on oh. PS3 yesterday. Also, just while we're on this this topic, I just think it's hilarious that everyone's like, I've been listening to podcasts recently and they're talking about how great the PS5 is and how fast it is. And they're all like, yeah, PS4 is so slow and awful. And it's like... This is the same cycle that happened seven years ago at the PS3. We were like, PS4 is so fast. It's awesome. PS3 is slow. And it's just the same situation over okay, and over. Okay. Now, hear me out now. The PS3 really does suck. Like, dude, like, PS3 I is awesome. No, PS3 it's not. is my favorite gaming it's, console. It's time. awful, shut the, dude. Shut the it's hell so up, slow. <laughs> GameCube is mine. Listen, the worst thing about the PS3 is the updated store that they did to match the PS4 because it does not run on the PS3. No, it doesn't work at all. Uh, GameCube is two, Coach. I hear you. It's like three frames a second, if that. Maybe two. It's like... I love the PS3. I went back to PS4 the other day to... It took me like seven minutes to start installing Pistol Whip. And then when I did, I had to bolt the PS4 down so it didn't fly off in the distance. While it was installing in rest mode. (laughs) The PS4 sucks, and I love it so much. I love yeah, man. I, I still watch like streaming stuff on my PS4 because I don't want to leave my PlayStation 5 on all night. And like, man, that media player is just garbage. Like that <laughs> mm-hmm. streaming anything on the PlayStation 4 sucks. Watching DVDs on the PlayStation 4 sucks. Like it's just that that part's not great. The gaming stuff is awesome, but yeah. like good, yeah. good grief. I think PS4 is probably my favorite Sony console of all time. And that's weird to say. Oh, yeah. That's weird for to sure. say. But it really is. And the thing is, is that they never gave us the PS1 classics for yep. some reason. Hey, Sony, just open it up, bud. All right? <laughs> just do it. Now we're sick of it. All right. Moving on. <laughs> Let's move on to game of the year. George. Starts off. Um, 
I'll be honest. I the one game I didn't play this year that I probably should have was um, The Last of Us Part Two. I just don't care about that game series. Me either. Uh, so yeah. I'm just I have zero interest in playing it. So I guarantee you, even if I did play it, my game of the year would still unquestionably be Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I mean, I played Last of Us Part Two, and it didn't make my top ten. I think it's yeah, game, God, like I, I just don't like that world it's just like hey what if it was a brutally oppressive world where everyone made terrible decisions in order to survive i'm like what if we didn't do that <laughs> like, Dude. What, if, what if i didn't choose to spend 60 dollars to hang out there what if we did literally anything else i um, love the thought the visual image in my head of when coronavirus got so super bad and everyone in naughty dog was sitting around a table probably just being like oh they're just like oh this is not ideal for us right now yeah and then being like no it's it's it it came from mushrooms it's cordyceps it's totally different um oh man it's go it's goes to tsushima man that game that game's rad you brought up complaints about cyberpunk saying that it played like a game from 10 years ago i think ghost tsushima kind of plays like a playstation 3 game like i don't think it's got super tight combat um see it feels it feels more like playstation 3 era hack and slash like it feels almost like a like heavenly sword or something Um, i think i think you can play ghost of shusima like that but they added in so many mechanics to the game that are reminiscent to me of like souls like mechanics like the counter system in that game is just unbelievable yeah, I did and most I'm, of my. I want to get more into it, like when I when I talk about. I did most of my stuff stealth, and then I set up my character so I could just like throw shurikens basically, um, mm-hmm. and just spam that in like a localized area. But like that game is just so pretty, and it was like one of the first games where I don't remember fast traveling. Like I just wanted to explore every mm-hmm. inch and nook and cranny, and I just wanted to get as deep into that game as I possibly could, and just like find the hidden areas and. That was like one of the first games I can remember in such a long time where like finding uh, like a quest or like finding an area before you were supposed to just like felt special and magical like that, like something about that just like made me feel young, like playing a video game for the first time. And it, oh God, that game is just that game is really good. And yes. you know, that game is really good because it hasn't really gone on sale yet this year. Yep. Um, so that's them trying to be like, no, this game's this game's worth the extra money. I got yeah. so I bought I the game on sale. Part two for thirty bucks. Uh, how much did you get Ghost of Tsushima for? Thirty five. All right, more expensive than Last of Us. There you go, Sony. Um, <laughs> um, Austin, kick us off for the second time. The second time? I said kick us off, but I already okay. told him, George. And he, well, we can kick second time. <laughs> So the the problem with this question for me or this award is I really didn't play that many games that released this year. So my answer is a little biased. Um, but really the only game that I sunk like a ton of time into aside from Hyrule Warriors. That Animal came out Crossing. Year, it's Animal Crossing. Yeah! Yes. So, but, and even though I haven't really played it in the last few months, I'll, I'll never kind of forget that time frame of when that came out. And I, I think it's kind of like a time period type thing. I, you know, it's just more Animal Crossing, it, and it, it's a great game. Um, but I think the the fact of the matter is, it came out literally when the world started going to crap, and um, it just made you know for that first month or two when everyone was stuck at home, it made everything you know a little bit better. So I, I really enjoyed my time with Animal Crossing, and I do want to go back to it at some point. I remember it very well because it came out the day Pennsylvania went into lockdown. Yeah. Bec- and that's why they started selling it at like oh, seven really? o'clock the night before. Yeah. Oh, and you know, I remember because Final Fantasy VII Remake came out like the week after. Yep. And I was, I pre-ordered it from like because, four but, different places. Yeah. And I was like, where can I get it? Because I don't know yet. I, 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 I couldn't get my it. Resident Evil 3. I had to uh, <clears throat> do a uh, pickup like curbside pickup to get my Resident Evil 3 from Target. You know what? I think my favorite gaming story of 2020 might be the fact that GameStop refused to close down during the Pennsylvania <laughs> lockdown and lost their business license and had to reapply for it. Like, yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Meanwhile, their stocks went from like $3 at the beginning of the year. They're up to like $17. It's you have GameStop stock, don't you? I don't. I sold it at $8. I regret it. You had, did you have GameStop stock this year, Elijah? Did you buy games? 
GameStock. Just call it GameStock. GameStock. It's, it's, GameStock. You Elijah GameStop bought me in Austin here? some uh, Nintendo stock. I was going. Yeah, I, I was buy. going to, but they were super buy. expensive. Who buys GameStop stock in 2020, Elijah? You could have lost everything. They almost went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was three dollars a share, and I bought two shares. It was <laughs> worth the risk. You're making me more mad every time you talk, young man. Oh, oh just wait. You, sorry, did you say you regret it when you're talking about two shares? I said I don't regret it. Oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, thought, said I, thought about, nothing. I thought about selling. I'm like, oh, I mean, like, you lost like eight bucks. Like, that's also yeah. Elijah's the reason million. I'm... Elijah's the reason I got fat in my 20s because... <laughs> 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 he made me stressed and I ate myself half to death. You couldn't stop thinking about GameStop no. and their value of their stock. GameStop. <laughs> All right. My game of the year for 2020 is Ghost of Tsushima. Woo! Yeah. Um, Again. Hey, and here, here, hey, here's the thing, man. And this is why I wanted to cut George off early because I knew I was going to bring it up. Because your opinion's more important than his, we get no, it. No, because I knew we were going to go back and forth a little more, and yeah, yeah. it'd be awkward if I was like, "All right, go to Tsushima, coach," you know, and that would be a little weird. But the thing is, is that no one else, for some reason, in this disgusting, godforsaken earth, has made a samurai simulator game that actually feels good and, and right. You know, it's never, it's ne- they've never gotten it. And we asked Ubisoft to do it for years, but Ubisoft was like. Uh, make it in Italy again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to Venetia. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. And um, man, everything about that game to me was perfect. And like I was telling George earlier, they added in so many mechanics that you can really play the game however you want. If you want to play the game like a samurai and counter every strike and and like like counter strike in these duels, you can do that. And that's how I did it. I just charged in and I was like, "Let's go." I don't, I'm Is there a better here. feeling in a game this year than like getting like when you first approach and challenge someone to like oh. a showdown and then oh. getting like three showdowns in a row? Oh, like, was, yeah. Was there a better feeling in a single game this year than that? Because I, I, I don't think I don't think there was like I played a, I played a lot of games. I, I really like that part. But the art direction was beautiful. Like the game yep. was so pretty and like it ran so well, like the loading times were practically non-existent, like. Uh, and so much of the world was rewarding you for non-violent things, which I really, really liked. Like, just going to an area and finding a hot spring, or, like, going to an area and, like, writing a haiku, or going somewhere and, like, finding, like, a fox. Like, so much of that game was just about the majesty of the place, as opposed to just ripping heads off. And don't get me wrong, I love to rip a good head off. Right? But it was so cool just to, like, actually experience, like, what made the world worth protecting, or yeah. worth taking back from the, the huns like it, it was awesome it was disgusting so good disgusting mongols disgusting yeah. Yeah. cut her heads off all right coach game of the year i didn't play anything from 2020 believe sweet it or not. elijah game of the year. <laughs> 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 or are you just joking coach or did you really not have one no i did i don't have one okay um I- i'm not going to talk too much about it because i already have at length last yakuza, yakuza like a dragon i'm 90 oh. hours in i love it <laughs> Mind freak. <laughs> Why do you love it so much? It just it has a, a great story. It's a great world. The characters are all fantastic. Everything is so thought out, and just most of the side stuff is so incredibly stupid but fun and well done that I can remember pretty much every single side story in the game. I really want to play it, but I refuse to play it until I beat Kwame too, because I have a dragon to defeat. Yeah, you made There's... a Roomba in charge of a coffee shop, right, Elijah? I did. Yeah, it's pretty sweet that you can do that in a game. There's not room in this town for two dragons, and I need to finish them off. There's I, I, I'm going to go back to Kalami <laughs> 1. I will. It's good. It's worth it. it I will, but honestly, like, talking to Coach, I get so hyped on Nintendo, and I feel like I'm sleeping on Nintendo, and I'm like, I really haven't played my Wii in a minute. I should do that. that my, Wii. Like, my, my Wii is set up right next to my GameCube. I'm like, but really, I should do that. And Man, I really need to play Blue Ocean. Hook up your composite cables and your wage. Like, yeah, here we go. I'm Look, ready. bro. Already have got it all set up. <laughs> I'm good to go. This is an amateur hour over here. I've got it done. All right, let's move on because wait, I'll... wait, wait. Let's get some. Let's get some fan game of the years in. Breaking, breaking news. Fan game of the years. Here we go, buddy. 
Uh, Alden said his is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay. Great choice. Seth is particularly fond of that choice. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not. I'm not. You guys overhyped the crap out of that game. Did you beat it? Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> jerk. You didn't like it? Idiot. No. <laughs> jerk. I didn't. Jerk. Wow. Idiot. <laughs> Loser. You, Brandon you, says. You dunce. Brandon says, not Hades, a.k.a. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, which I, I thought was a particularly good choice. Um, it's a VR game. I've heard Play it's it super it. good. It's phenomenal. I've only played a few hours, but from what I've played, it's 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 a very good game. It might be um, one of the most full-fledged VR games I've played so far. Which one is it? Is it spooky? The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Huh. It's it's very, very good. So I can't. It. I can't. But is it spooky? Oh yeah, it's spooky. Oh, it's I'm spooky. Not, I'm good then. No, thank you. I can't do the walking dead anymore. Know. I can't do it. I, 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 well, I it's not really connected to anything. Can't do it. It's not connected to anything though, Seth. I don't care about the Walking Dead anymore either. And I still bought it. Um, it has no connection really to the comics or anything. There's no like it doesn't pull in any of the characters from the show or the comics. The or only connection about it. It's just is there are zombies. Yeah, it's it's great. I really recommend it. Um, and then Andy, again, never heard of her, said hers is also Animal Crossing. So, and she's she's played like 500 hours of that game. Like, no joke, like literally 500 hours. How cool is her? I don't know. Know. She better have like a metropolitan, like skyscrapers. <laughs> and... I'm proud, proud of that. That's an accomplishment. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's move on, gentlemen. Last one. Game of the decade. It's time. This is a good one. I like this yeah, one. Yeah, this one's a great I thought idea. about this for a while today. Because like, like people were doing this in 2019, but 2019 wasn't the end of the decade, and I don't really understand. Technically it that. was, but okay. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. The year starts at one. It was year yeah. one, not year zero. It was yep. year one. I rue Seth on this one. No, it starts at zero. No, it didn't. Yeah. It was the first year. There's no zero year. Show All me right, well. I want to know. Was there a year zero? No. No, yeah. it wasn't. Sick of your Day one, year Not zero. Because <laughs> you hadn't finished the first year yet. No. It's you literally the- just said the first year. First in line. Came out of your mouth. So during that just, whole time, it's year zero. If I have one candle, that's one candle. That's the first candle. It's not a zero <laughs> candle. <laughs> Candle, really? That was <laughs> that's the first thing <laughs> phenomenal conversation that's ever happened. If I have one panini, <laughs> if I only got the one garlic bread, <laughs> that's my first garlic bread. You don't have zero garlic knots, not until I'm finished with it. <laughs> this shit is out of control. This is All stupid. Right. Game of the this decade, so George Loftus. Finish us out. Um, how did everyone else do this? Can I give a runner up and then can I give like the actual yeah, sure. game? Just, 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 just no runner up. Mass same. Effect 3, that game is oh, yeah. GD, GD incredible. Nice. That's, I think that's my favorite Mass Effect game. Everyone was just like, the ending wasn't really a story. It, like, it didn't have its own ending. I'm like, no, it was the ending to everything. Like, it was great. It was yes. perfect. It was yeah, lovely. It was, it was um, I hate those people. Yeah, yeah I do too. Screw them. Um, I think my actual answer has to be Skyrim, though. Like, I understand, like, now it's not the same game as it was when it launched, but, like, that was the game that, like, that was the first time I ever, like, really cared about RPG. And so that just opened so many doors. And then the fact that it just kept re-releasing. And so, like, I played Skyrim on PS3. It, it bugged out. I was pissed. And then, like, a year later, it was on sale for 360 at GameStop. I was like, yeah, screw it. I'll grab it. And then I played 400 hours of it. I was like, man, that was a really special time. I'll always remember that. And then a couple years later, it released on PlayStation 4. And I'm like, yeah, uh, I don't know, I guess. And then I grabbed it. And then I played 300 hours into it. I'm like, yeah, that game's still really good. And then it came out on VR even after that. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that's still really good. And then I played it on Switch in between that. like, It's just like the one game that keeps bringing me back. It's the game that I compare every RPG to. I think it is fundamentally important to game design. And I think for a long time that that is the the prize that people were chasing. I think they wanted their game to be better than Skyrim. And so, like, if you set the bar for people to clear, I think that has to be 
worth acknowledging. And so that is my game of the decade. It's um, yeah, Skyrim. I Skyrim never connected with me like the other ones did. I don't really know why. I've played a lot of Skyrim. I've beaten it. I've put a ton of time into it. Um, but for some reason, I, I think it was the environment. The environment was just a little too samey for me. Sort of, and Oblivion had the same sort of issue. Yeah. Everything was green in Oblivion, and in Skyrim, everything was snowy. Yeah. And as opposed to like Morrowind, where there was like so many different environments around. Um, and I, I got kind of sick of the Norse like thing too as well. But no, I, uh, I, I, com- I completely agree with that. Like that game definitely has faults, but like I don't think any game really hit me the way Skyrim did in the last 10 years. Do yourself a favor at some point and research in like YouTube Skyrim lore and just be amazed. Just be amazed. Because whatever Bethesda's doing with, with the Elder Scrolls Online, they've been planning out for like 20 years. All right. Yeah. We'll do it. It's, it's, it's really wild that Bethesda's had this whole thing, this story going for a long time. Uh, Austin, game of the decade. So this question was like impossibly hard, this award no, it wasn't. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, it's not. No, it's not Breath of the Wild. Surprisingly, oh, thank God. Um, I, I'm going to say it's a tie because I really can't. I can't choose between these two. But yes, Monster Hunter World is one. But the other is the most I've ever played of any video game. It's had a significant impact on my life, and I think about it nonstop, and I always want to go back to it. Okay. What, uh... what do you think it is, Seth? Animal Final Crossing? Fantasy 14. Final Fantasy 14, baby. Woo! <laughs> By the way, Austin, you said beforehand it's a game, and I'm like, it's either Monster Hunter World or Final Fantasy 14. And I was right on the tie. <laughs> I'm waiting, bud. I'm waiting for you to come back. Okay, so I, here's here's the deal. Years. I obviously love Monster Hunter World. Like, I mean, it's partially how Andy and I like started really talking because we both like were really into that game and started playing it together. <laughs> hey, you play a Monster Hunter game? <laughs> Wait, you met your wife through Monster Hunter? Not wife yet, but uh, kind of. We, okay. That's how we started talking more. Was we were both into Monster Hunter, so we started playing it. Together. I just see Austin hearing like the word Monster Hunter from across the classroom. He's like, "Hey, <laughs> what? What do you mean?" <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that GIF where the guy just kind of sits back and gives the thumbs up. I kind of have a feeling that's Austin. Just he hears Monster Hunter from a class across the room yeah. and he just leans back, thumbs up. I just killed Rathos last night. Didn't even take a hit. (laughs) (laughs) Here's the thing. I love Monster Hunter World. I think it's a 10 out of 10 game. I mean, it's probably one of of my top three games of all time. And honestly, I think it's better than Final Fantasy XIV. But the thing that I have to say about XIV is that, you know, I've been into Monster Hunter since like the late 2000s. I've been playing it since whenever 3 came out. And, you know, world is just kind of more of the same, just expanded. But I never got into an MMO ever. And I tried multiple, multiple times. And not just that, but I never really got into any Final Fantasy games. And so when I tried 14, I was like, yeah, okay. Like, I'll, I'll try this and give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. And then I ended up putting in like 500 hours, which is, you know, nothing compared to most people. But still for me, like as somebody who never really touched an MMO before, um, again, you know, it's probably one of my top five games of all time. It's just such a phenomenal game. It's so well made. It it really pulled me in like no game really has. Um, and I want to go back to it so badly. Yeah, and you should because the best is still in front of you, bud. If yeah. we That's if we set ahead. us time a time for all of us to play this, should I play before? Like, should I get to a certain point and then play with you guys? Or do you want to... No. Coach, coach me through my, my baby steps into this world. The game does a good enough job coaching you. Like, like you'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. And we can all play together immediately. So we'll okay. say when. Coach, don't even start, dude. Don't Stop. even. Stop. Don't even. You said you were gonna play Stop Monster Hunter World with us, and you dipped after one session. I, I just it wasn't my jam. <sighs> world of Warcraft classic. What about that one? Oh, that that's, one go. That's that's a sore subject. Coach spent a lot of money on World of Warcraft classic. No, I didn't. You bought a, you you bought a, to it for like months. You bought a year subscription. I bought a year subscription, but it's not a lot of money. <laughs> that's the that, that, that's a significant amount of money. That's hold on. Okay. Well, anyway, yes, Final Fantasy fourteen. I I really I think it's a tie. I can't really decide between the two, but such a good game. It's one hundred eighty dollars. All right. <laughs>
I agree with Final Fantasy XIV. That is a great game. It's a great mm-hmm. choice. The comeback story. It's a great story. My personal game of the decade is Persona 5. I think it is. Really? I I do. I think it is the greatest RPG of all time in terms of in terms of quality. I don't think anything has ever surpassed it. And the story is incredible. The artwork's out of control. The, the soundtrack I still listen to daily. Rivers in the Desert knocks oh, my yeah. socks off. God, that song time. is amazing. I yeah, I listen to it daily. All right. And um, I I really want to play Royal. I just have a problem because I don't want to play my PS4 right now. I don't have a comfy chair to play on the PS4. I have a couch, and it's not ideal. Dude, from the outside, like I never played that game. I never really tried a Persona game. Um, the art direction is like what makes me want to pick it up. Like yeah. just like the menus look so cool. In there. Yeah, they, they. I don't know who designed them, but give them an unlimited amount of money to do the next one because Persona 5's style is like out of control. It's the most stylish game I've ever played in my life. Every time you go into oh, a yeah. menu, there's like a little animation, and dude, it's incredible. The game's the game's a perfect ten for me. Um, and I can't wait to go back and play Royal because I'm super, super excited for that. Um, all right, let's move on to the old Coach Arunsky down here. All How right, about so, give me your game of the decade? All right, my game of the decade is Ocarina of Time 3D. Now, it was, I was going to choose, well, uh, it was also close with Breath of the Wild and Arkham Asylum, but the, what, what got me with, um, 3d was it wasn't just a port right they it was i think it was even more than a remaster i mean they really went in there and optimized it for the 3d and that was there's a select few games that the 3d really enhances the gameplay and that's one of them and they added to it they had the boss rush mode where you could go through once you beat um the uh the the phantom ganem you can go through and, and replay the bosses over and over. And uh, I was playing that during uh, Afghanistan. And then pretty much after that, I played that game every single year. Dude, that's a great, that, that's honestly a great choice. Like, I feel like so many games like that just sort of get like forgotten and they're just like, oh, it's just a remake. But it's like, no, man, this was a very thoughtful remake. And also like just how easily they made it to play that game on a modern device. Like that should be commended and celebrated. Like that's really freaking cool, man. We're about to come to a head where it's going to be really hard to play a whole bunch of games because consoles are going to die. Yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden it's just like, how do we play our PlayStation one games? It's like, well, we got our PlayStation threes and then PlayStation threes are going to die. How are we going to play them then? You know, like it's just, and so the fact that Nintendo does this for so many games and modernizes them. And I trust Nintendo to bring them to more advanced consoles like more new consoles more than any other company just because they've been doing it for so long like they brought it to gamecube which i will say um ocarina is my second favorite zelda game twilight princess is my first i think yeah. twilight princess is awesome and breath of the wild is my least favorite zelda game so hey would you i would rather play zelda 2 to be honest with you elijah quit looking at your phone give me your game of the decade <laughs> uh my game of the decade is bloodborne be- oh, nice. Because that game, first off, that game got me into an entirely new genre. I would, I had never played a Souls game. Okay. I had played a Souls game before. And I'm like, this game sucks. And after half an hour and put it down, uh, the just everything about the art from Bloodborne is amazing. Uh, I love the city Amsterdam. And somebody asked, like, in an interview to somebody working at uh, Gorilla Games, which is stationed there. Uh, what is your favorite part about the city? And they said it basically looks like Bloodborne architecture, but not as sad. And that perfectly encapsulates I love looking at Amsterdam. I love the architecture. Bloodborne is just the music is perfect. I hear it and still get chills. That game is so amazing and I think really helped define this last generation of gaming. All right, is anyone else going to say it, or am I going to say it? Do I, have, do I have to be the one to say it? <laughs> say it. Say it. It's your favorite game of the decade, but you cheated your way through it. I mean, yeah. All right. I regret and nothing. We put it out on the table. You didn't even play the game the right way. Hey, if <laughs> we... You're about it for a 
like five years and I knew you did it. I knew your dirty little worm mouth. Why was I lying about it? I'll openly you admit did. it. You did on the podcast RM Network. Go back and listen. You just to call it a dirty little worm mouth? I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> your dirty little worm mouth wouldn't but admit it. can't talk, Seth. I don't think I care for that very much. It sounds kind of icky. <laughs> I knew it the whole time. I know you. All right. You're worth it. Well, that was uh, Coach. What's wrong? You look sad over there. No, just chilling. Just chilling. No, no I mentioned Star Wars game, and he's sad. I get it. You look buzz, <laughs> a little buzzed. Oh. A little yeah, buzzed yeah. light year. Yeah, a little Cabernet Sauvignon makes is Coach that... Cabernet Sauvignon gone. Oh. Merlot. <laughs> Merlot is what I drink. Okay. Sorry. Merlot. I, I just wanted to have fun with the with the pun, but is it now pronounced Merlot? No. That unless you drink a whole merlot of them. Hey! <laughs> All right. Do we have any uh, closing thoughts, concerns? Who did uh, what about our listeners? Did oh, they yeah, give our, our, their their game of the decades? Yes. Uh, Alden said his a lot of love for this game tonight. Ghost of Tsushima is his game of the decade. Oh wow! Okay. 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 Yeah. Good. Good Fair. choice. Good Andy choice. got it for me for Christmas, so I'm super excited to play it. Uh, Brandon said his is say it. Just say it. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> he would pick something stupid like that. More like Breath <laughs> of the Mild. <laughs> that's great. I, I can't know, believe Elijah's not that. mean, but that's the meanest thing he's ever said. <laughs> and Andy, no surprise, Monster Hunter World. Oh, I oh. thought she would say Animal Crossing. Do you think she said that to make you happy? She did. Probably. Yeah. Probably. She's and really it like a... It worked, didn't it? Yeah, it worked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised no listeners wrote in with like Assassin's Creed Odyssey or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I like, those I, answers. That was a big game. I, I almost put on B- Battlefront 2 just thinking because like that game like really sort of changed my mind on multiplayer. Um, hmm. That was How just... it could be. That was so much fun. Titanfall 2 was also like a consideration okay. for a moment. Um don't worry, Titanfall 2 is going to win a couple of awards this Friday on Elijah's Twitch channel. I wonder if that Battlefront 2 comment on Reddit is still the most downvoted comment of all time. What was it? Oh, I remember that. The most downvoted comment of all time on Reddit is EA responding to someone about... Remember the whole DLC fiasco at right. the, when the game launched? They were saying we wanted our players to feel a sense of accomplishment or something oh, like that. Yeah. But it turned out it took like 800 hours to unlock a character or something ridiculous because like they, they yep. trickled out resources. It was like ridiculous. And then they, they got blasted into oblivion. All right. Well, rightfully so. Oblivion, another good game. Yeah, they I fixed have... it. <laughs> yeah, they, they fixed it, all right? Battlefront 2 is real good now. They, and they injured his co-op, which is incredibly fun. Um, which one? Like the co-op for Battlefront 2 where like you're kind of like dropped in and then you have like different, like there's like four or five rounds per match, basically. Hmm. But you have to accomplish different objectives to move on to the next round. Super fun. And, like, that's where you get, like, the experience to, like, unlock character stuff. Just because it's you and three other people. So, like, all the XP from killing 60 droids or whatever is going to go to, like, one of the four of you. And it was, like, the first place where I felt like I could practice playing with, like, a Jedi or a Sith or whatever and just not get hammered within 30 seconds and just, like, lose all hope of, of like ever getting to practice with that person it's really really fun and really good um i recommend the co-op for battlefront 2 because like that game's like what 20 bucks now eight bucks four bucks like the game's like constantly on yeah, sale. Yeah, super cheap it's, cheap it's like 7.99 like the game's really really good for 7.99 i don't think there'll be a battlefront 3 until ea and lucasfilm reaches a new deal because they're coming up i think in 2022 or something like that something like that yeah yeah that seemed like such a long contract and here we are already at the end of it i would like to see them not do another contract with anybody why do they have to have a contract that's a good point man like i kind of want like an open i want an open world star wars game from ubisoft they're really good at open worlds like i want no no i want to explore like a moss eisley city as like a smuggler like that sounds fun I want like a, a combat game. I want a racing. Like I want another Star Wars racer in like 4K. Like bring back pod racing. Those games were great. Yeah. I will never forget seeing Rise of Skywalker in theaters with one friend on one side of me and one on the other side. 
And the now group, this is pod race. <laughs> they they are doing the chase in like on the desert planet, and they like do the turn to go through the canyon. And I have one friend turn to me. Now this is pod racing. And just as he leans away, the other one leans in from the other side. Now this is pod racing. <laughs> I'm like, I was thinking it. You didn't both have to say it. <laughs> No, Elijah, I was referring to the fact that you had one friend on each side, so you could say that you were the capsule and they were the two, like, engines the of the pod. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird. The whole the whole time, they just kept going, like, <laughs> <laughs> That's the Bulbas. All right. Well, <laughs> you were making... <laughs> Let's wrap up. No, I should have shaken the some sound that you were there. making was some bulbous Yeah, I know, I know. We got it. <laughs> or a fish. Or somebody... Drowning. I don't there's know. A, it's one of those. There's always a bigger fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap up the show you. for uh, for Austin's sake. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening to our, I guess, final episode of 2020. It's been a it's great our, first year. It's our final, but their first episode of 2021. Yeah, true. Is it? Is Friday yeah. first? It's Friday's yep. the first. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Thank you for listening to our final episode of 2021. I don't care when you listen to it. It's irrelevant. Time is relative. Um, And remember, it's been a great first year, but remember, Georgia, like your hat, but specifically remember (laughs) to like, comment on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel, rate our uh, podcast. If you are listening to a place where you can rate podcasts, we really appreciate it. Fill out your questions to the show at bit.ly slash frameskipq um, or write us in at frameskippodcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Twitter at frameskippod, and that's also our Instagram name, facebook.com slash frameskippod. And our, you can find us all individually on Twitter. I'm at Seth S. Taylor. Elijah is at Loco Lizard Man a lot. Austin is at Austin Jeller. And George is at GB Loftus. Where's Coach? <laughs> at frame skip coach on. is not on twitter he's at frame skip there he is <laughs> right where we left him <laughs> I, I always i always feel good when the old frame skip pod likes one of my tweets yeah like, oh, there he is the old man smiling <laughs> still got it <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start calling coach skip moving forward skip skip coach skip. what well, coach skip. more idiot references before we stop calling him coach and start calling him Papa Time or something like Papa that. Papa Time. Is, isn't Coach already an 80s reference from the TV uh, show? No. God, that that show is so good. I literally just I love bought that it. Show. I just bought it on DVD from Amazon two days ago. We it was just on sale for like what was his name? What was the guy's uh, name? Craig T. Nelson. Yes, that's right. Be it. <laughs> God, that show is so good. All right. He was better in Poltergeist. All right. He's actually I, uh, really good in Parenthood also. He was, he was really and good. And which one? Oh, Parenthood, the, the TV show. Oh, okay. I didn't see the TV show. Uh, That's a really good show. All right. Well, until next time, enjoy your New Year's and happy Christmas. Bye. See you in another life, brother. Boxing Day. Not anymore. Time is relative. July.